The root cause protocol is one of the most popular nutritional healing programs online. It promises to cure chronic fatigue, inflammation, and many other symptoms through the use of whole foods and a few selected nutritional supplements. But can it live up to the hype? That's what I want to talk about in this video. I will explain what the root cause protocol is, review it, share my own experience with you, what I liked, what I didn't like, and at the end of the video, I will also share with you if I recommend it to other people. Let's get started. Okay, first things first, what even is the root cause protocol? Basically, it's a nutritional healing program designed by Molly Robbins, who suffered from many health problems himself. These included brain fog, inflammation, and chronic fatigue. So he set out to design a program that was based on only whole foods and supplements to cure these symptoms. He basically wanted to find a natural solution for his problems. Most of the things I will be talking about in this video are taken from his root cause protocol guide along with his book called Cure Your Fatigue. So that's the basis for this review. On page 102 from his book Cure Your Fatigue, he actually gives a one sentence summary of what the root cause protocol is all about. So he says, increasing and maintaining bioavailable copper, magnesium and ceruloplasmin while keeping iron in check. Now this sentence might sound a little technical and cryptic at first, so let me explain it in more detail. Basically what Robbins identifies is that nutrient deficiencies and imbalances are the root cause of many of our symptoms that we as a modern society suffer from, like chronic fatigue, brain fog, inflammation, all these things. Now he believes that bioavailable copper, magnesium and ceruloplasmin which is a carrier protein for copper, is deficient in most people, while at the same time iron is too high in most people. This is called iron toxicity and a rabbit hole in and of itself. So the goals of the program are to increase bioavailable copper and magnesium in your body, to increase the production of ceruloplasmin, which like I said before is a carrier protein for copper. It also has other functions that he goes over in the book and to keep iron in check, so to lower iron toxicity and gradually detox iron, basically. To achieve this, he lays out several steps that he calls starts and stops. You can find these steps on his website, and I will only go over the most important, because there are quite a few steps and I can't go over all of them. First, to reduce your iron load, he advises you to stop taking iron supplements and iron-fortified foods. He also recommends most people, if they can, to start donating blood. Because as you might know, when it comes to minerals, iron is one of the highest minerals in the blood. To increase bioavailable copper, he recommends stop taking copper antagonist supplements, so supplements that will lower copper in your body. These can include zinc or molybdenum, for example. And he also recommends to start eating grass-fed liver, because liver is high in copper, and it is also a fairly good source of copper because that copper is organically bound. So it's different from taking copper supplements. To increase ceruloplasmin production naturally, he then advises you to stop taking synthetic vitamin C supplements. That's because the ascorbic acid in the vitamin C supplement actually has been shown to lower ceruloplasmin levels in scientific studies. The way it does this is fairly technical, but a simple way of explaining it would be that it basically unbinds the copper from the ceruloplasmin, so it pulls out the copper from the ceruloplasmin molecule. Instead of synthetic vitamin C supplements, he likes you to take a whole foods vitamin C supplements. This could be, for example, from cerola berries or camu camu. There are several options online nowadays, so just make sure to find a quality one because whole food vitamin C supplements can be pretty high in pesticides because, well, as the name suggests, they come from whole foods, so the ascorbic acid has not been isolated. Also, to increase ceruloplasmin, he recommends you take a cod liver oil, because cod liver oil is high in preformed vitamin A, which is retinol, which is the most available form of vitamin A. Many people rely on either beta-carotene supplements, which is pro-vitamin A, which has to first be converted in the body, to vitamin A, and this conversion doesn't always work right in many people. 
Preform vitamin A, so retinol is very important for ceruloplasmin production and also loading that copper onto the carrier protein ceruloplasmin. So it's vital that you get enough vitamin A in its bioavailable form for this to work properly. And then at the end, he also has some general recommendations. These are kind of lifestyle recommendations. For example, to reduce exposure to environmental toxins. This could be EMF, it could be buying higher quality foods or filtering your water, for example. He also tells you to get more sunlight, which everyone should obviously, to reduce your stress. And he generally recommends whole food sources for vitamins. For example, bee pollen for vitamin B or red palm oil for vitamin E. Okay, so that was a general overview of the root cause protocol. Of course, I couldn't include all the steps, but I tried to distill it as best as I could to give you a good overview. Let me now talk about what I liked about the program and what I didn't like. So the first and I think most important aspect of his program is that he gives a very in-depth explanation of iron overload and iron dysregulation. Most people are still not familiar with this. So they think in terms of either having an iron deficiency or not having an iron deficiency. The problem is that iron is one of the most misunderstood minerals out there. Like I said before, the keyword here is iron toxicity. You see, most of your body's iron isn't actually supposed to come from your diet. It's supposed to come from your body's recycling system, the iron recycling system. Every day you need around 25 milligrams of iron, give and take. And most of that comes from the recycling of old red blood cells. Only a very small part, a few milligrams are actually supposed to come from your diet. So the new blood cells are then made to live for around 120 days, after which they're supposed to be recycled, that old iron is supposed to be given to new red blood cells, and the process starts again. Now, if you now go get a blood test and it shows low iron levels or low ferritin levels, then that's usually a sign that you aren't actually iron deficient, but that your iron recycling system isn't working properly. And this is very important because what many practitioners tell you is to go get an iron supplement if you're iron deficient. Instead, what you should focus on is to improve your iron recycling system so that it works again. Otherwise, you will over time increase the iron load on your body. And as you probably know, iron is a very oxidizing metal. So it creates oxidative stress in your body, meaning inflammation, damage to tissue, all that stuff. Because our body has a fairly hard time to eliminate excess iron, the higher your iron supplementation, the higher your iron load. So this is really a vicious cycle where the low iron in your blood, yeah, it will quickly get better with an iron supplement, but over time, the iron in your body will become more biounavailable and it just gets deposited in the tissue where it creates oxidative stress. So that's what I really like about his book. He really goes into detail with this and explains all the biochemical processes that underline iron toxicity and the relation between iron and copper. Because to fix this iron problem and get your iron recycling system working again, you do need to focus on copper. Copper, along with its carrier protein, ceruloplasmin, is what makes iron bioavailable again. So like I said before, the solution is not to take iron supplements, but instead to focus on your copper and work on your ceruloplasmin. But there is a caveat that I will talk about in a second. Now, the next thing he identifies and that I really like is his focus on magnesium deficiency. Magnesium deficiency is so widespread nowadays that basically everyone needs a magnesium supplement. And we really aren't told that enough. It's one of the reasons many people cannot calm down anymore, have energy problems. Magnesium is involved in so many enzymes and used as a cofactor that if you're deficient in it, Basically, your whole body kind of breaks down internally. I also generally like his approach to whole foods and how he prioritizes them over supplements to get most of your vitamins and minerals. So for example, getting vitamin A and D from cod liver oil instead of supplements. That's a very good thing in my opinion. And I have a more detailed review of vitamin A and vitamin D in my videos on how to take them properly. For example, one reason why vitamin D supplements can become problematic is because they knock down other nutrients in the liver. Vitamin D and vitamin A, for example, are antagonists. 
So the more vitamin D you take in its supplemental form, the more vitamin A will be knocked down in your liver. It will basically crowd out vitamin A. And like I said a second ago, vitamin A is super important for ceruloplasmin production. Lastly, all the wellness steps are fine as well. So getting more sunlight, clearing environmental and food toxins, releasing stress and generally relaxing more, all that stuff is important and recommended. Now, what about the things that I don't like about the root cause protocol? To start off, and this is something I don't like about many programs that are too broad, that are basically aiming to be a solution for everyone, is that they're not individualistic enough, that they don't take into account your nutritional bioindividuality. Now, to be fair, the root cause protocol has an option for people who are interested to get blood tests and to get a hair mineral analysis, which personally is my favorite tool for diagnosing nutrient imbalances and deficiencies. And you can work with a practitioner. I don't know how good the practitioners are because especially analyzing and interpreting a hair mineral analysis can be somewhat tricky, but there is this option. So that's just something I wanted to say. The next problem I have with the protocol, and this is actually the main problem I have with it, is that the difference between bioavailable copper and free unbound copper is not made clear enough for the average reader. What you have to understand is that bioavailable copper bound to ceruloplasmin, so basically when it's being carried around by its carrier protein, has antioxidative effects and can help with infections such as viral or bacterial infections. But when it's free and unbound, it actually creates oxidative stress, just like iron can. So it's a very potent oxidant in the body and many people actually suffer from this unbound free copper problem. They have too much copper in the tissue where it's creating oxidative stress and not enough bioavailable copper in the blood. Many people call this problem copper toxicity and I have a fairly long video that goes over all the symptoms and explains what copper toxicity is. I know that Molly Robbins doesn't like this term. He actually calls it a copper dysregulation. But when he talks about copper dysregulation, both in his guide and his book, the book is a lot more detailed, but in both cases, he usually says that the solution is to get more bioavailable copper. For example, on page 121 of his book, he says that the fundamental paradigm of the root cause protocol is that as we age, we lose copper. That is an established biological fact and copper is key to harnessing oxygen and iron. Now, what he means, at least I believe, is that as we age, we lose bioavailable copper. But the average reader will probably misunderstand this and think that the problem is a total lack of copper in the body. And if you look at a sentence from a total body copper perspective, the statement is false. Because as we age, our copper burden actually increases. The toxic copper we have in our tissue increases and the bioavailable copper decreases. Because he puts so much emphasis on making copper bioavailable again, he really only focuses on ceruloplasmin production and optimizing it. Now, I like that approach because improving ceruloplasmin is important, and he primarily recommends whole food vitamin C along with cod liver oil. What I don't like about it is that he also recommends a higher copper intake through foods such as grass-fed beef liver. He also wants you to cut out all copper antagonists. Like I said before, this could be zinc or molybdenum. The problem is that in practice, just focusing on ceruloplasmin production and cutting out all the copper antagonists doesn't work for many people. It actually makes copper toxicity worse. That's because even though you might increase your ceruloplasmin production, you also increase the copper load on your body. Now, Morlins would probably tell you that this isn't a problem because if you have enough ceruloplasmin, all this will be taken care of because all that copper will be bound. But in my experience, that's just not true. In most cases, you also need other nutrients, for example, zinc, to keep copper in check. And one more thing, there are also other reasons why ceruloplasmin production can be low. It's not just a low copper intake. It could also be things like weak adrenals or a sluggish liver because ceruloplasmin is produced in the liver. Lastly, ceruloplasmin is an acute phase protein. That means it goes up in times of stress or sickness. So using ceruloplasmin as a marker for your progress is also not a good idea 
because your measurements might be skewed depending on if you're suffering from an illness or something when you got your blood drawn. All I'm trying to say here is that energy is a very complex topic. Copper, iron and ceruloplasmin are definitely very important, but just focusing on them doesn't work for many people. And you do need to always take into account nutritional bioindividuality and look at the big picture of what other nutrients they might need and what other nutrients they might be deficient in. The reason this is important is because that in many cases, when you take a recommended supplement, you actually have a bad reaction to it. Now this might be a healing reaction or this might really be a sign that you are deficient in a cofactor and need to take something else. For example, many people react badly to a higher copper intake, even if it's copper from a natural source such as beef liver. So in that case, you really need to know what you're doing to fix the problem. And just telling people to work on their ceruloplasmin levels, like I said before, in practice often doesn't work. Okay, now that you know what I liked and what I didn't like about the root cause protocol, what's my conclusion? And do I recommend it to you? So the short answer would be, it really depends. If you're already following the RCP and you're having success with it, then obviously keep at it. Always do what works for you and what you feel most comfortable with. But if you're just starting out or maybe the program is no longer working for you, then my recommendation would be to familiarize yourself with other nutritional healing programs. For example, mineral balancing or the Walsh protocol. There really is no perfect program and I believe it's best to know all of them and then take what you like from each and combine the best things that they all have to offer. That's what I did and what I saw most results with. As I've said before, personally, my biggest problem I have with the root cause protocol is that it focuses too much on increasing ceruloplasmin and bioavailable copper while leaving out all the other minerals and nutrients that are important here. Oftentimes, it's not enough to just increase your ceruloplasmin to detox copper effectively if you are very copper toxic. I know I was and I always felt worse when I increased my copper intake. If at this point you're completely overwhelmed by all this information and don't know where to start, I totally understand you. I was too when I first started out with my healing journey and this definitely is a rabbit hole. So take your time, I can only recommend my videos because I'm really trying to share my experience with you and then just take one step after another. You will see progress, I promise you.